Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Ash Anderson and today we're going to be talking all about Apple Pay and how it works. If you are not familiar, Apple Pay is the tap to pay functionality that's built into an Apple Watch, an iPhone, it's even built into some iPads I believe, but it is that tap to pay functionality where you can add either an Apple card, Apple has its own credit card, or you can go out and add your, your JP Morgan card, your American Express card, you can add whatever card you want to Apple Pay as long as they're supported. You can go to a merchant and you can tap to pay. So in today's video, we're going to talk all about how those cards get added to your device, how those cards are used in a transaction, and why it's the most secure method of payment that we have available today. So this is Apple Pay Visually, and we're going to start over here at the left, the primary account number or your credit card. So I realize that this is probably like a Visa number, but this is an example of a, of a MasterCard. It has a primary account number. So if you watch the How Payments Flow video or How Payments Are Made, when you go ahead and swipe your card, this card number is passed along all the way through the system. You know, it goes to uh, your, your merchant acquirer, passes it to the card network, the card network passes it to the bank. This card number is passed back and forth by a lot of different people, along with some other information like your expiry date and what you're trying to buy and all that sort of fun stuff. All this information, though, is passed in a normal transaction. Now, instead, when you are setting up Apple Pay, you pass this primary account number into your iPhone. So if you've ever used Apple Pay or ever tried to set it up, you can take your phone out. You can actually point it at the credit card number on the back of your phone and it will scan and do some OCR on the numbers. It'll then have your credit card number. It sends that credit card number over to Apple and Apple do something really cool, which they encrypt that information. So they take the card number. They don't store it on their servers at all, but they take that card number. They take the information that they need to be able to pass along and they encrypt it with an issuer specific key. So for MasterCard, they have a specific key that only MasterCard knows. They have a specific key that only Visa or only American Express or only any other card issuer they work with knows. That means that if they accidentally sent this MasterCard information over to Visa, Visa would be like, we can't use this. We have no idea what this is. And they would obviously send back a decline because that information means nothing to them. But in almost every case, right, Apple is sending the MasterCard information encrypted to MasterCard with a key that MasterCard knows, or whoever the card issuer is in this case. So that issuer, and we're going to stick with MasterCard throughout this example, that issuer takes the information that's been given to them by Apple and makes an approval decision. So they'll say, yes, this card is allowed to work on Apple Pay. Yes, we're happy with it being here. Yes, they have balance. Yes, it's an active account, all that sort of fun stuff. And they approve it. Now, what, what they do is they send back something called a device account number, which you'll see referred to as a DAN in some places. You see, we've got DAN, we've got PAN, but they send back this device account number to Apple, and then Apple go ahead and put that on the iPhone. So the DAN is, so this device account number is completely unique to your card, but it is not your card, right? It's not the 44444. It's a completely different number that the bank or the issuer or whoever's making this decision has made up and is sent back to Apple. And they said, hey, if ever they try and make a payment, just send us this number and we'll know who it is. So they send this number back to Apple. Apple goes ahead and sends it back to your iPhone. It gets put in something called the secure element, which is a completely separate part of the phone that is used to keep secure information. But, and go back, they're not secure. They're not storing anything that is on, that is known, right? So if you have your account number and this is it, they're not storing that number in your phone. They are storing this number down here. And the cool thing about that is, is that even if someone figures out how to break the secure element and get all the information off of that, all they have is this device account number. And the other cool thing, device account number. Device here being the key word. If someone is able to break the secure element on your iPhone and get that information out of there, the number that's been provided is only good if it's tied to this device. So yeah, that means that if somebody stole your phone, figured out how to break it, put that information over there, they can't go ahead and start tapping your card because it's just, it's not the same device. This is a specific device account number that is specific to your device. Apple takes it, puts it on your device, cool. So that is how Apple Pay works when you go ahead and scan your card to be able to add it to your device. But what happens when you go ahead and use it to try and pay? So you have your phone, it's got your card in this uh, in the secure element, you tap to pay at the terminal and that device account number that is, again, unique to your device. So even if somebody had a different device, copied your account number, they can't do this. 
This device account number, along with information that represents your device and a one-time token is sent to the issuer. That one-time token you can think of as like a, uh, if ever you've used a website where you have multi-factor authentication and it says, hey, enter your one-time password or hey, we just sent you a text with a one-time password. That is what this one-time token is. It's a very time-specific thing, meaning that if somebody intercepted that transaction and tried to regenerate it in some way and say, hey, we're actually this device and here's the one-time password, it would be out of sync. Things just would not work. So device account number keeps you secure because it's supposed to only come from your phone. If that was to ever break down, there is also this one-time token that the issuer is expecting as well that it would be almost impossible to, to break both of these at the same time. So payment gets approved. Obviously, that if you watch the payments video, that information of payment approval goes back to the uh, back to the terminal via like the merchant acquirer and the issuer and the card. A lot, a lot goes on, right? But it goes back to the terminal and then uh, you don't actually see anything on your iPhone in this case, but you will see an approved on that terminal. So I wrote down here that Apple Pay is both more secure and offers better privacy. And the reason for that is, is retailers might store your credit card, right? They probably shouldn't. Usually it's just stored last fall, but there's nothing to stop a retailer from doing something that stores your credit card and that sort of stuff. If that happened with Apple Pay, they're just securing a device account number. And it's more secure because the device account number has to be used with your device. So if somebody has a record of all these device account numbers, they can't actually do anything because it's not on your device. They don't have the ability to generate a one-time token. They're not going to be able to do anything with that information at all. So any of these data breaches where it's like, I believe there's one in the past where Target lost all this credit card information. Well, cool. My device account number's in there. Nobody can actually do anything with it. Like I said, your card number is not submitted in the transaction. It is this device account number. So your card number is never stored by Apple. Apple do not store your card number. The bank store a device account number. They send that back to Apple. Nobody uses your card number once it's been added to Apple Wallet. It's never seen again. Never needs to be known again unless you have to uh, reset up your Apple Wallet. But that card number is not transmitted in any transactions. It's not stored on your iPhone. It's not stored at Apple card number, account numbers not stored anywhere. And uh, yeah, again, that card number is not stored on your device. We, we know that there's that secure element where a device account number is stored, but not your card number. That's a breakdown of Apple Pay and sort of what Apple Pay does, how it works, how it all functions and how it all ties together. There are some intricacies that if you haven't watched the How Payments Flow video, you know, there's the, this Apple video is gonna be in a playlist. Go back and watch that one just to see how payments actually flow. And Apple sort of fits in that mix by just being basically the credit card, right? But instead of passing a primary account number, which credit cards do when you swipe or insert, I will say when you swipe or insert, because if you tap to pay on a on a credit card, it depends upon the credit card and sort of how it's configured. A lot do function like the, like the iPhone with not a device account number, but a simulated uh, primary account number. So it can get, yeah, it can get a little bit complex depending on how payments actually function, but Watch that last video. That one should help you figure out how, how the payments are actually flowing through the system. The iPhone, though, is without a doubt, and, and to, a, to a similar extent like the uh, Android devices with Google Pay, these are the safest and most secure ways to make transactions at, at fuel pumps, at gas stations, all that sort of stuff where you sometimes have skimmers. They could skim all the information they want. They cannot reuse or steal your payment information because it's, it's specific to your device. So yeah, that's been a breakdown of Apple Pay, Google Pay, if you want to like put that little asterisk there and how it works. Hope you enjoyed the video. If there are other payment sort of products or flows or anything like that that you're interested in, please drop a comment below. I'd love to research it and make a video so that we can build out this playlist to be like really comprehensive on how money actually moves. But thank you so much for watching this one. I will see you next time. Have a good one.